we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope, and the second candle is for peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you offer rest for our hearts and peace for our souls. Give us grace to seek peace in our lives, peace in this community, and peace in the world. Through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And I invite our children to come forward to help us decorate our crush for in preparing for Christmas, and after that, they may be excused for godly play. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our collect for St. Ambrose. O God, who gave your servant Ambrose grace eloquently to proclaim your righteousness in the great congregation, and fearlessly to bear reproach for the honor of your name. Mercifully grant to all bishops and pastors such excellence in preaching and faithfulness in ministering your word, that your people may be partakers with them of the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Baruch. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show you your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name righteous peace, godly glory, Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height. Look toward the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading Canticle 16, would like to read it antiphily, with the women leading the way. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior. Though his, that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to, to our, our fathers. fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This, this was, was the, the oath he swore, he swore to, to our, our father Abraham, Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him yeah. without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for, for you will, will go, go before, before the Lord to prepare, to prepare his, his way, way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by, by the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of, of their, their sins. sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the, the dawn from on high, high shall, shall break, break upon us, us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and, and to, to guide, guide our feet into, into the, the way, way of, of peace. peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it, was it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our epistle this morning is taken from Paul's letter to his brothers and sisters in Philippi. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, 
having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the regions of Iteria and Trachonitis and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priest priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, as we celebrate our namesake, St. Ambrose of Milan, we also have the custom of lifting up a special St. Ambrose saint or two who have made a special contribution to our common life this year. I'll announce our 2021 saints a little later in the service. But right now, I'd like to lift us all up together as St. Ambrose saints, as beloved children of God in this place. Paul's words in our second reading today immediately make me think of our parish. Philippi in Macedonia is Paul's first mission on the European continent. The community there is a small outpost of God's love, a first step in bringing the good news of Jesus to a new part of the world. This Philippian mission is our forebear in a way, the small seed which grew into the Western European Christianity which we Anglicans inherit. Like us at St. Ambrose, the Philippian community began as a mission church, a small community with a big heart for one another and for Jesus Christ. Following Jesus isn't easy for them or for Paul, their founder. When Paul writes to the Philippians, he's in prison awaiting what could be a death sentence from Rome. 
And yet, he's joyful and hopeful for the future of this community that he's planted. I thank my God every time I remember you, he exalts. He's joyful because in good times and in bad times, the Philippians have been there for him, for one another, and for Christ's mission in the world. Tony Brennan sent me an email a while back that expresses the kind of confident joy that Paul is describing. She wrote to tell me about a former parishioner here named John Greaves. Some of you may remember him. Tony interviewed John shortly before his death as part of her project to learn more about the great generation of World War II veterans. Looking back at her notes, Tony found the following words from John. He said, I don't have any family close by. I know that I'm on the 10-yard line and heading for the goalpost. So for those last 10 yards, I want to experience the love of my family at St. Ambrose. It is my anchor. Like Paul in prison, John knew that the community in this place would carry him in his time of need, supporting him with the loving hands of the Lord whom they all followed. The word that Paul uses to describe this kind of community relationship, the sharing of love, is koinonia. We often translate this Greek word as fellowship, like it's a kind of model for coffee hour or something. In reality, though, koinonia is more like common investment in an enterprise, like a communal partnership. When we say that St. Ambrose Church is a place of friendship and fellowship, we're not just enjoying barbecues and teas and chatting in the courtyard. We should claim more than that. We're promising that we will support one another and God's mission here with all of our gifts, investing in one another, sharing our lives to bring God's healing grace to the world. Take a look at St. Ambrose, our patron. He's described as a passionate little man with a high forehead, a long melancholy face, and great eyes. I think the painter did a good job with that. He was a man of learning and possessed the gift of oratory. He was also a fierce and brave leader who stood up to the powers that be. During the turbulent days of fourth century church politics and strife, Ambrose, a lawyer, was sent to Milan as Roman governor. His task was to maintain order in the region. The story goes that as he stood up one day to plead for moderation and peace, a child in the crowd called out, Ambrose, Bishop! The whole assembly took up the cheer. Not only was Ambrose a layperson at that point, he was still just preparing for his own baptism. A role as bishop was the last thing that he expected or wanted for his life. Surprised and dismayed, Ambrose was unanimously elected bishop of Milan baptized, ordained, and made bishop, he ended up as one of the four founding fathers of the Western Christian Church. He was also thrown headlong into managing difficult years of conflict and controversy. Can you imagine? What if Charlie White started chanting, Walter Bishop, or Christy, Bishop, and everyone in Colorado took up the cry. 
What if your name were called out like that? Would you run? Or would you follow the call of community, despite the shock, despite having turned your life upside down? If you'd feel like running, you're certainly not alone. It took me 30 years to listen to God's call to become a priest. Even then, I'll never forget the first day of hospital chaplaincy, the boot camp of the priesthood. Not yet in seminary, I stood in the nurse's station with a newly printed chaplain badge hanging around my neck like a noose. This is your new chaplain, the supervisor cheerily announced, and all eyes turned on me, bright with hope. Don't call me a chaplain, I wanted to holler. Can't you see? I'm not really a chaplain. And yet, there I stood. I was their chaplain, and they needed me, ready or not. What's it like to say yes to God's call in community? Many of us here today could describe it. We have among us wardens, vestry members, ministry leaders of all sorts. We're often called to things beyond our wildest imaginations. We're often called to exercise gifts that we don't even know we have, to step out of our comfort zones for the good of others. Yes, there are limits. Sometimes we need to rest. Sometimes we need to receive rather than to give. And sometimes our gifts just don't match up with a certain need. You wouldn't want this math-challenged priest to do Jill's work as bookkeeper, for example, or to be in charge of gardening. All the plants would surely die under my care, just like they do at my house. And yet, in Christ, we are all called to koinonia, we're called to invest in one another, to share in God's work in this place. Now, the pandemic has worn us all out. It's turned our souls inward and away from the community that we used to be. But in my heart, I still hear the true and important words that Paul shares with us today. I, too, thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the work of Christ from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion. Our size doesn't matter. Our average Sunday attendance doesn't matter. Our quiet location here behind a fence away from the city, that doesn't really matter either. What matters is our sharing. Each of us, young and old, are sharing with one another and with the world in all that is grace and love. In today's gospel, the powers and principalities of John the Baptizer's day are set before us in great detail by Luke. They are set before us so that they can fall away to reveal a scruffy, little-known desert prophet, a prophet through whom God's light shines into the world. I hear in the second year of the coronavirus pandemic, in the first year of the presidency of Joseph Biden, in the second year of the governorship of Jared Polis of Colorado, in the second year that Sam Weaver was mayor of Boulder, when the most reverend Justin Welby was Archbishop of Canterbury, 
The Most Reverend Michael Curry was presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, and the Right Reverend Kim Lucas was bishop of Colorado. A word of overflowing love and of promised release came to the people of St. Ambrose and called them into the hurting world. Can you hear it too? Let us now stand and confess our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be unit, united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, 
give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for people around the world who are migrating from their homeland, seeking a place to lay their heads. We pray for the whole world as we watch and wait and wonder as the COVID-19 variant Omicron spreads. We groan with those in grief and disbelief after another deadly shooting at school, this time at a Michigan high school. As we await the birth of the Christ child, we are aware of children around the world who are suffering in Yemen, in Nigeria, for those children everywhere with mental health distress. Invite your own prayers and intercessions aloud or silently. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, thought word, word, and, and deed. deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So, on St. Ambrose Day, we, every year, have a saint or two or three or however many. Let me grab these plaques down here. There we go. This started way back in, well, not that way back, in 2008. Uh, the first name on here, you may recognize some of these folks, Charlie and Joe Jacobson. Herb and Montez Wright in 2009, Dan and Tony Brennan, Arnold and Millie Williams, Bob and Jerry Carruthers, Terry and Janet Coling, Walter and Jane Latimer, Paul Austin, Randy Hickernell, and Kathy Reed, Elsa King and Ellen Horn Lamb, Bill and Carla Bigham, John Taylor and Kelly Miller, Miller Taylor, in 2018, then we had to move to another one, uh, Marsha Peteranitz and Rosie Tarada in 2019, Chris Burtness and William Eliason on Zoom last year, I remember that one. And today, we have three saints to lift up, and the, they are, drum roll, <laughs> right, Bruce Dickinson, Chris, Woo! Hank Eddy, Woo! and Doug Stewart. 
Oh my God. <laughs> so, let me say just a word about these guys. They're all guys today. Um, Hank, you know, this is kind of like a, a continuation of my sermon here. Because this year we have three people who exemplify this kononia among us. Um, Hank, you do constant quiet service around this campus, helping others, doing it out of love for Jesus and for this community. So that is why you are lifted up as one of our saints today. Doug and Bruce, you all too, um, this summer, after the big basement flood, uh, 2.0 or however <laughs> many times it's flooded down there, um, they, have, they showed a perfect model of how we need to work together in this community. Uh, because they s stepped up, even though they didn't want to, they stepped up um, to offer their time and talent and skills in construction and in organizing people. Um, and they gathered others. They got the sex and skill, they got many of you here to come together to lend a hand. They didn't do it all by themselves. They got the choir involved. Christy also got, got them going. <laughs> so um, they, you know, they did work that I don't think was overwhelming to anyone. Um, and it wasn't relying just on the staff to do it, but it was spreading the work out and everybody doing a little bit to get that done so that we can concentrate on other things and move on with our mission and quit flooding down there in that basement. So they are also our saints. So we've got chocolate. If y'all want to come up here, uh, we've got chocolate for you to pick out, and we've got a certificate for y'all. And everybody can give them a hand when they come up here. Yeah to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrament of the body of Christ, of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, 
being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Ambrose and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now sing. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us, with our friends on Zoom, say the prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, as, as you, you promised, you promised to, be to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us, be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the bread of heaven. It's the truth sent from above, the truth of God, the God of love. Therefore, don't turn me from your door, but hearken rich and poor. The first thing that I will relate, that God at first did man create. The next thing which to you I tell, woman was made with him to Thus we were heirs to endless woes. 
eternal God, heavenly Father. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the words of St. Ambrose, O hallowed be the approaching day, let quietness be our morning ray, and faithful love our noonday light, and hope our sunset calm and bright. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our worship has ended, but our service in the world continues. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks alleluia, be God. alleluia. 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 Everybody on Zoom, how you doing? How you doing?